the second presentation that we've done on CombiTube. In the first one we talked in depth about insertion criteria, but I want to review that briefly here. The indications for use of the combi tube are to assist us with gastric distension when we're going to be doing positive pressure bag mass ventilation or bag to uh, tube ventilation. We're going to be doing ventilation for an extended period of time. The longer we do positive pressure ventilation, the more likely we are to have problems with gastric distension. So the combi tube is to help us limit that as best we can. Contraindications any patients that are under 5 feet tall or any of those that have esophageal damage, whether that's from esophageal varices, which are uh, varicose veins essentially on the inside lining of the esophageal wall. Uh, those are typically from patients with liver disease, alcohol history, um, patients with esophageal cancer, or an esophageal burn. So if the esophagus is damaged, then the, it would be contraindicated for us to use the combi tube um, because of the excess risk that we might um, puncture through the esophagus. The uh, combi tube comes in a roll-up pack. Um, tube sits on one side, a 20 cc syringe, a very large 150 cc syringe. There is an emesis deflector that's in that section of the bag, and then the suction catheter over here. If you will simply rip along the perforation here, then all of these compartments um, become usable. The combi tube itself has a distal cuff that's inflated, of course. With the white balloon, it has a large proximal pharyngeal cuff that's inflated with the blue balloon, and it is a combination of two tubes. It's a combination of an esophageal tube and a tracheal tube. And for that reason, it has two ventilation ports. The number one is the one we typically use 90 to 95% of the time at least. Very rarely is that second ventilation port uh, the one that we want to use almost always, that is the route to the esophagus, to the stomach. Um, but in, an, uh, in a rare case where you're able to accidentally, blindly place this tube between the vocal cords and have an accidental tracheal intubation, uh, at least you would be able to use that. Again, the, the stats vary on that uh, from different sources, but we're talking less than 5% case that you're, less than 5% chance you're going to get that in the trachea. So where does the air come out? Well, the air comes out a series of holes that are between those, the two cuffs. And so you have to have a good seal with your pharyngeal cuff. You have to have a good seal with your distal esophageal cuff in order for there to be uh, an airtight area in between here so that when air is ventilated down the tube that it comes out these holes and then doesn't leak down into the esophagus or leak back out their mouth from the top end. So um, this cuff seal is a very, very important thing. In our larger patients and in our patients with heavier chests uh, where we need to use higher pressures it, to raise the chest to do ventilation, um, sometimes the pressure we need to ventilate then will overcome this uh, cuff seal and we'll end up with a leak. So here's four pictures um, using a model, and I wanted to show you what the model looks like just for orientation before we start looking at things. Here's the trachea, sits anteriorly, bifurcates at the carina, and this is, of course, the route to the lungs. And then posteriorly to that, you have the esophagus running along behind. Um, on this view, here's the esophageal opening. Here are the vocal cords in the opening to the trachea. When we've placed the combi tube, you can see where the air holes should line up. They should be immediately adjacent to the opening to the trachea. So up in the top diagram again, we want the air holes to be uh, lined up such that air, when it's ventilated down the tube, can go down the trachea. And we have a, a cuff ceiling, cuff ceiling here, and a cuff ceiling up top. And then we inflated the balloon here in the bottom picture, we inflated this large pharyngeal cuff um, to give you a little bit of an idea what it looks like, and I actually had to move it out somewhat uh, to make the picture show up. But again, air is supposed to come out here. You should have a good seal here on the posterior pharyng pharyngeal wall, and then that distal cuff should be sealing as well. Here's a side view from a different model. Again, to orient you, here's the trachea. It sits anteriorly. That would be your thyroid cartilage, your Adam's apple. And then along behind is the esophageal passage. And this is the combi tube in place. There's that large pharyngeal cuff, not inflated. And the distal cuff is harder to see, 
but it's sitting right down in here distal to um, the thyroid cartilage. And again, those are not inflated. When we, when we inserted the tube, we inserted it to where the teeth, or if the patient doesn't have teeth, where the teeth would be, or the teeth are to that mark. And then as we inflate the cuff, inflate the, the uh, large pharyngeal cuff, it's going to center itself. So again, placement is to the teeth marks, but it doesn't have to stay at the teeth marks. So there's the large pharyngeal cuff in place. With the blow-up view, you can see a little bit better the white area in here. That is the distal cuff on the, on the end of the of the combi tube placed in the esophagus, and that's the target that we're that we're looking for. Again, a, a even more zoomed-in view, very clear now. You can see that cuff, and you get an idea of of what we're trying to get done. The holes where the air comes out in the combi tube would be right in this area in order that the air would come out and go through the vocal cords which are sitting essentially right there and into the trachea. Here's a top view again give you an idea of the pharyngeal cuff and a reminder again we go into the teeth marks but we don't have to have it stay there. It's very common and expected and intentional that this pharyngeal cuff when it is inflated it will find its own best location it will seat itself and we need that good seal. So now we're ready to talk about insertion and one of the first things to talk about is this concept of pre -oxygenation. It is not hyperventilation. It is pre -oxygenation. We're going to need between 30 and 45 maybe even 60 seconds to place this combi tube, uh, deal with its various issues in terms of cuff seal and get good chest rise. So we're going to be sacrificing about a minute's worth of ventilation in some cases, at least 30 seconds. And in that case, we're going to need our patient to be as well oxygenated as possible. Now, we're using this device in people in cardiac arrest. And our standard flow rate off of our regulators is 15 liters per minute. There's nothing wrong with increasing that to 25, but we, we don't typically do that. What we want to do during pre-oxygenation, however, is to increase our oxygen supply to 25 liters per minute during that pre oxygenation phase while we're checking cuffs, while we're lubing the tube, and then we're getting prepared. And so that should take around a minute or so. And you'll see a video here in a little bit that we will um, add in that will show you the insertion technique and it does it does take about that amount of time. So you start the pre oxygenation, that's your first step, and then always read your balloon and test the balloon. Um, and test the cuff. So you're going to inject 100 cc's of air into the blue balloon and then remove the syringe and see that the balloon stays up and that the valve holds and then you're going to insert again, withdraw all that air and leave it, leave the uh, syringe loaded at 100 cc's. You can do the very same thing on the, on the other cuff. Always read your cuffs. There's two sizes of combi tubes out there the um, 41 French that we use and the 37 French that's carried by Boone Hospital Center Ambulance and they have different um, inflation volumes and so always read the balloon before you um, inject. Those syringes are coming at least in the way we're getting them packaged those syringes are coming preloaded at those amounts. The next thing I want to talk about is something called the lip maneuver and this was in um, developed by a Dr. Lip. It has nothing to do with lips like on your face. And the lip maneuver is necessary prior to insertion um, because when the combi tube comes out of the package it has this sort of curvature whereas anatomical curvature is much more of an L shape. And so the lip maneuver is simply taking the cuff to cuff and changing the curvature of your combi tube right before insertion. Here's another look at it. This is what the anatomical curvature is, but you can see how the combi tube out of the package doesn't work that way. So lip maneuver right before you go in, you simply touch cuff to cuff and then go ahead and insert and your 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 combi tube will have attained more of an L shape uh, than it does coming out of the package. We like to see you hold it as a dart that helps you not use excessive force and you want to place your your fingers 
at the teeth marks. Again, if they don't have any teeth in, then we're going to go where their teeth would be. We tend to like to have their teeth in for bag mass ventilation. It helps us get a good seal, but we also then tend to, to find them to be in the way for when uh, paramedics are doing tracheal intubation. You don't have to remove the teeth in order to place the combi tube, but if you do have teeth uh, moving around, go ahead and get them out of there. And then hold your tube like a dart and that will help you to um, have good insertion technique. Once you're in and everything's done and you've listened over the epigastrium and you've heard no sounds and you've listened over the, each lung field and you've heard good lung sounds and you're sure you're in the right place, now it's time to add the emesis deflector and this comes in the package um, and it, you, it will go on the number two tube and this will allow when vomit does come up the number two tube, it will allow it to be squirted out sideways rather than, than right on you where you're working. And so that's a key piece of equipment to remember. So that's the combi tube. All right, so when you test the cuff, you need to insert and twist, inflate, and then remove and make sure the pilot balloon stays up. And then you want to suck all the air out of it and make sure that the balloon is completely collapsed again so you don't have any problems. And you're going to test the second one. The syringes come pre-filled to the right amount. And um, so you don't need to squeeze the actual balloon, the actual cuff. You're just checking the pilot balloon. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do is lube the distal cuff liberally. And the next thing I'm going to do is test the cuff. And I read the cuff and it says 15 cc's. So that's what I'm set at. Twist, inflate, remove. See if the balloon stays up. Don't need to play with the cuff. Pull it back down, make sure it's totally collapsed, and leave it preset. Same thing over here. Read it. it. Says 100. Twist. Inflate the large pharyngeal cuff. Unhook. Make sure my balloon stays up. Twist. Suck all the air out of it so it's totally down. And leave these set to go. Okay. Now we're ready to insert. So I'm going to bring these over and I'm going to hold right at the teeth mark with my two fingers so once my hand gets there I'm done and we're going to put his head back in neutral position right before we go and the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to do cuff to cuff the lip maneuver in order to get this thing in the right curvature and I'm going to lift in here and insert right down the tongue to the teeth marks let go of it rapidly and smoothly inflate and keep my syringe same thing there, keep my syringe, the person bagging is now back on the number one port and we're going to look for chest rise and if we're at all unsure we're going to listen over epigastric right away while somebody ventilates at a normal rate. Three, four, five, six, two, three, four, five, six. If I had any doubt at all, I would have switched over to the number two cuff, I'm sorry, the number two port. Tried the same thing. If neither of them work, then I'm going to fully deflate. And fully deflate. And I'm going to back this out just a bit. And then reinflate and reventilate and hope for that if that works. If that doesn't work, then we're going to deflate completely and take the whole thing out. And we're going to